Hello. My name is Martin and welcome back to another video. Okay, so where are we this week? Well, if you follow the A680 road out of Rochdale um, and you go through Norden, we turn left down Black Pits Road. We're going to follow the Naden Brook um, and we're going to go through Ashworth Valley. Now, many local people will know this because there are probably generations of kids that have grown up that when they were cubs, scouts, brownies and guides, they've gone to the, uh, the campsite down here and had many a happy time. But I've actually never been, believe it or not. So we parked at the bottom of Black Pits Road. Now, this is one way of doing it. There are many other ways. But the main thing is we're following the Naden Brook through Ashworth Valley. And we're going to see what we can find. Because I know there are the remains of some old mills down here. Right. Do you remember when we did a video called The Valley of the Lost Mills or something like that? And we was over in um, just outside Rochdale. And we found the remains of all those mills. Well, we're back today in Rochdale again. So, again, just outside Rochdale. Um, now, when I did the Cheese Dunlum Mill video, I think a few people came down and followed where I'd been to have a look. And I probably didn't do a very good job of explaining where everything was. On this video, as I, I'm going to follow the Naden Brook. Now, apparently there are some old remains of old mills down here. So, the brook's down here, it's very beautiful. Uh, the brook's down here, as you can see. In a little valley. So we're going to walk down here. I think it's called Ashworth Valley, this. We're going to walk down here, and I think there's the remains of two mills. Coalbank Mill and Ashworth Mill. And we'll so see what we can find. I've got James with me today. In his retro coat. <laughs> <laughs> his re retro red coat. He said, do you like my coat? I said, <clears throat> yeah, it's nice that, James. Red. I used to have a red coat when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> um, I work with James. Yeah, that's I work with him and uh, he's, he's curious about the videos and what yeah. we do and everything. So he wants to see what's going on. Uh, I just want to say thanks, James, because uh, he's not used to being on camera. He was a bit nervous and uh, every every couple of minutes I'm sticking a camera in his face and, uh, you know, it's not easy when people do that. So thanks for being a good sport, James, and coming on camera. Anyway, let's crack on. Right, so we're going to follow the Naden Brook, see what we can find. I think there's some very old mills down here again, remains of um, um, the uh, sort of like spinning industry in this area. Let's go and take a walk. Well, look at this. How amazing is that? And it's standalone, there's nothing else around here, so obviously... Oh dear, that lawnmower is killing everything, isn't it? Right, so I was asking the question, why is there a standalone chimney here? Obviously there was some mill here, and it's been uh, knocked down, and there's now that new housing estate. But it looks like it's the remains of um, Black Pitt's Mill. That's all that's left of it. Amazing that they left the chimney up, but there you go, Black Pitt's Mill stood here. And uh, for some reason, the chimney has survived. Let's take a little closer look at it. So James, we've got a choice. We've got the bridge. Oh, did we go up the steps? <laughs> <laughs> it's a man of few words. What do we do? Um, I don't see. I want to follow the brook, really. Um, but I don't know whether the best route is over the bridge. We'll take the bridge because it's following the brook, but it looks like it is. But we may have to go 
up the stairs in the woods. Let's follow the, the bridge first and see what happens, eh? Right, so we followed the bridge and immediately, I didn't think it'd be this close, we found the remains of something. I'll tell you what that is when we get there. So we'll go through the trees and have a look. Beautiful little bridge here and the remains of the, some old building. Let's go and take a closer look, shall we? Oh no. Yeah. Wow, so this is beautiful. This is what I think is Coalbank Mill or the remains of Coalbank Mill. So very similar to Cheesedon Lum Mill, isn't it? Beautiful little valley we're in. It's in the middle of the river here. Middle of Brook. Gorgeous bridge there. So what I'll do is I'll do some a bit of research and I'll do voiceover of where I think we are. But well, there's again there's loads of remains around here. There's something behind us up in the woods. There's obviously, obviously been a lot of industry around here at some point. It's absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I love this bridge and what we'll do is, we'll take a look on top of that bridge because it's very thin, there's only, I think on the top there's only the keystones in. <laughs> so we'll have a look at it, but there's something on top of it which I'll show you in a minute. So we'll take a look onto the bridge. This is the little track over the bridge here. Let's hope it holds out, eh? Again, bits of a uh, metal there. That's metal, and that is. So it's obviously had something on. Um, your guess is as good as mine there. But it's obviously been a mountain for something. And we're, we're literally one brick thick here over the, uh, the Naden Brook. So just behind the bridge and the brook, uh, the remains of the perimeter of the mill. Um, and if you look closely, it's a nice little set of stairs there that possibly would have been an entrance, but I'm pointing there to the perimeter wall of uh, of the old mill. Uh, I love them steps, absolutely love them. The fact that they've uh, survived. And then obviously you've got the telltale sign, wherever you see cobbles in the middle of the woods, you can tell it's been a, a busy place because they've built a road to it, can't you? So we'll take a look at that little uh, bridge there. So we've just come over the other side of this little brook here. This is the convergence of two brooks. You've got the Millcroft Brook here, and it joins with the Naden Brook. But by coming on this side of the little brook, because before we were looking at that structure there, by coming on this side, we found more remains of the building that was here right on the side of the brook. No doubt this was water powered. Where the wheel was, I don't know, because it would have had, possibly had a water wheel, I imagine. But I'll just turn the camera around, and behind us is the remains of, like I say, more of this mill. Okay, so as I say, this is Coalbank Mill. Now the land, uh, a long time ago around here, was owned by the uh, Ashworth family. 
We think this mill was built in the very late 1700s or the very early 1800s and probably began life as a cotton spinning mill, probably a fulling mill. It's as a lot of these places did, they changed use. So um, in the 19th century, sometime in the 1800s, it became a paper and printing works. And then in the early part of the uh, 20th century, early, early 1900s, it closed down for good. A lot, of the, uh, a lot of the mill was pulled down, as you can see, and a lot of the stonework was taken away, probably used for other things. Um, for whatever reason, um, little bits of it remain. Now, in Grace's Guide, um, Colbank Mill is described as a bleachers and dyers. Uh, so again, sounds like it's gone through various stages and various uses. And it was in the ownership of Mr. Richard Bell in 1891. Right, so what do you think of that, James? Mint. Mint, right. <laughs> so uh, that was Colbank Mill. So we're going to walk now down the Naden Valley and see if we can find, uh, I think it's called Ashworth Mill, I'm not quite sure. We're going to walk down the valley now, see what else we can find. It's absolutely beautiful here, I'm blown away, it's great, isn't it? So James has just spotted a heron. Now it's only a grey heron, right, and they're very ubiquitous in this area. But I love herons. <laughs> I don't think fishermen like them, but they're very uh, prehistoric looking when you get up mm. to them. They're very much like pterodactyls and it's sat on a branch over there. We'll see how close we can get to it. I'm sure it'll fly off, but that's brilliant. Yeah. Well spotted, heron. There's people now saying, <laughs> we have herons everywhere where we live, <laughs> but we, we don't in North Manchester in the Terry no. streets. <laughs> We're disturbing it now. And I'm sure it's aware of our, uh, of our presence. Anyway, we're going back down towards the brook. Uh, we might be on a wild goose chase here, you know. Why? Because I'm not sure where this path goes. <laughs> I think we made a bit of the balls up here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've left the path again and got lost. Although we have found <laughs> a lovely little bit of a waterfall there. Uh, something leaking out there from the uh, side of the hill. Mm -hmm. So I'll turn the camera around and we're again in the undergrowth and we don't know where we are. I think we need to get back to the path. <laughs> <laughs> and you've only got, I've got a pair of walking boots on. He's got plimsolls on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Right, have you got your feet wet, James? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> right, this is where we are. Uh, journey en journey's end, I think. I think we need to uh, go back up here somewhere. It's very beautiful though, and the herons rather angrily left the area. So, as I finished this video off, I started to read about mining in the area. Uh, the area Ashworth Valley was on the edge of the Lancashire coalfield and there was mines in the area. I possibly showed you evidence of it already or I'm going to. The ochre that's coming out of the ground, the, uh, the sort of like evidence of underground workings. And another interesting thing that came out, when we did the Cheesden uh, Lum Mill and that, that video, if you watch, watch that video, Cheesden Valley is very much, uh, the Cheesden Brook is very much in a U-shaped valley. Now, the Naden Brook that we're looking at now is in very much in a V-shaped valley. And from what I understand, going back to my geography when I was 12 and 13 years old, Cheesden Brook is in a U-shaped valley and that was a glacial valley, apparently. Naden Brook is in a V-shaped valley and the Naden Brook has cut that valley. That's why it's so uh, steep either side. And you, may have, you might have noticed that in the video. So just quite interested in the two valleys, the U-shaped valley of the Cheesden Brook caused by a glacier, if, I, if I'm getting this right, and the Naden Brook in a very V-shaped valley that, that the Naden Brook has very much cut itself. 
There was a colliery, well, there was a few collieries here. Apparently, the V-shaped valley, they dug into the side of the valley because the coal seams were visible. Um, and the initial mines that they did many, many years ago, got no dates for you, but we're going back probably a couple of hundred years, were drift mines that went into the, uh, the side of the valley. Eventually, when they got more advanced, they did sink shafts. I've read an account of a 12-year-old boy that worked in one of the mines, and I'll read it to you now. Now, one of the mines in this area, in this part of the valley, was called Rid Pit, and I'm guessing this is all that's left of Rid Pit. Um, anyway, I'll read you that account. It was probably about six or seven in the morning when he went down in the cage with the pit men. He said it was like going down a waterfall. The mine was so wet. And when the men got out at the bottom of the shaft, the water was up to their knees, and as a child it was up to his chest. He was so terrified by this and by the total darkness that he couldn't carry on and returned to the surface, never to go down the pit again. Those two photographs I've showed you are actually mines in the area. They're from a website called haywoodhistory.com, so I thank that website. And they're from another mine in the area, and strangely it was called Tramping Cat, which is a great name for a mine. Anyway. So there you go, the usual account of children working in mines. The thing that gets me about that story was that he had a choice not to go back in. You would have thought really that if he'd gone in and hated it and been terrified, he wouldn't have had a choice. He would have had to have gone back. But in that account, he says he never went back into the mine. Anyway, I just thought I'd, I'm out filming another video at the minute. I just thought I'd interject because as I finished the video, I read this stuff about mining in the area and it being on the edge of the Lancashire coal fields. Let's crack on with the video. And what I love about this is, as you look at this old path that runs onwards, you can see the, uh, the indentation where the cartwheels have uh, worn it away along there. Love uh, little details like that. So we're hoping this leads now on to the next mill after our wild goose chase. Now, just for a moment, if we uh, do a recap back to this video here, uh, this is a similar video and this is uh, the Cheesden Lum Mill and it's on the Cheesden Brook which is just up the road from here, it's just literally around the corner. Um, somebody sent me some information after that video. There's the ruins of Cheesden Lum Mill but somebody sent me um, a PDF of a very old book about the mills on the in the Cheesden Valley and I wanted to show you this because the Cheesden Lum Mill is now in complete ruins. Absolutely beautiful, but in complete ruins. But there's a picture in the book from the 1920s. Here's a picture of the mill back in the 1920s. Just look how complete it was and how fantastic is that. And, and I wish I'd have had that at the time, but it just shows the scale of the mill and, and how it would have looked back in the 18, 1800s. Uh, I love that picture. Such a rare, a rare picture as well. Let's crack on with our video. So, the Naden Brook runs into the Cheesden Brook, which is from Cheesden Valley, where we did the last video about the Lost Mills. Uh, Naden into Cheesden, Cheesden into River Roach, which runs through Rochdale, and then um, the Roach runs into the Irwell. So all these little brooks are actually ultimately tributaries of the River Irwell. It's very, very pretty around there, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a... It's like a fairy glen. <laughs> what a place we've found here. This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I've seen pictures, but it's always better when you come and visit, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? Brilliant, isn't it? So we're going to show you, there's a waterfall and a mill and I've either shown you or I'm going to show you. But I wish I'd have brought me waders because look at that. Look at that there, fantastic. So I think that's some sort of very old culvert uh, where they've directed the Naden Brook towards the mill. I think, although we are in the valley, so they were limited on where they could uh, direct it. But uh, I can't see light. So it, it's definitely worth an investigation, isn't it? Although it's a long way to carry your uh, your waders. 
Hmm, might have to come back here and take a look in there. What do you reckon? fantastic we've got a waterfall here obviously man-made because of I think they've tried to create a pool of water because obviously the brook where they just run not natural down the valley so we've got a man-made waterfall there brilliant you've got the rest of the Naden Valley and you've got the beautiful mill there which I think is called Ashworth Mill but I'll look it up do a bit of a voiceover and tell you what it was so we'll go inside the mill, take a look, and then I think beyond there is another waterfall, we think, we're not sure, but what a gloriously beautiful place. If you like the last walk, I know some of the people followed me and did the last walk, you'll love this walk, uh, like I say, I'll explain this one a bit better for you, but uh, in the words of James, it's sick. <laughs> So we've just come from up there, down there, look at them steps there, still left. And then this big slab, I think has fell somehow. I think maybe this was covered over at one point. Come down the steps, and this way, and look where James is. And then there's the waterfall. And look at that. Let's go and take a closer look. Okay, right on the edge of the brook here, they would have created a, an artificial pool of water up top there that would have poured over a water wheel, drove a water wheel. That teeth, that uh, wheel there with teeth in would have driven the mechanisms to drive the machinery in the mill. The water that um, drove the wheel would have fallen down into a, just I'm going to show you in a second, there's a trough below this, this um, gear wheel mechanism. The water would have driven the wheel, dropped down into this uh, trough here and been fed back to the Naden Brook. Um, and there you go, There's the that would have been the leet, the way it went back to the Naden Brook. I imagine that would have been the case. Anyway, this is Ashworth Fulling Mill. I've got a date of 1808. Not a great deal of information. 1808, Edmund Ashworth listed as the fuller here. And then another date of 1848, it changed to a, um, it was woolen and a cotton mill. But like a lot of these places, it probably became redundant in the early 1900s. So I don't know if you can hear me because waterfalls there, and this is recorded on my phone. I'm trying to get a nice long exposure of uh, the waterfall. I need an ND filter really, but I haven't got one, but I have a way of doing it in Lightroom. So we'll see if we can get a nice shot of that. See what we can do, but so, what a place. I've lived here all my life, I've lived around here all my life, and this has been here. I've never, <laughs> I've never seen it before, it's fantastic.
So as I suspected, just on from Ashworth Mill was another little weir. Quite beautiful, but we had to stand on the uh, edge of a ravine to try and get shots of it. Very difficult to get to, but there it is for you. Uh, I strongly suspected that was there. So, I wanted to mention in this video, a bit of a hero of mine, probably a hero of everyone's, has died in the past week. Ennio Morricone, um, I think I'm saying his name right. Do you know who Ennio Morricone is, James? No. Right, if I said to you, have you heard of a set of films called The Good, The Bad and The Ugly? With oh yeah, yeah, with the cowboy. With Clint Eastwood, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he did the music for that and they were very, uh, the films themselves were, were directed very, in a very unique way. They weren't your standard cowboy film. Yeah. Lots of long shots and oh. really close-ups and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Sergio Leone was it, was the director. But Ennio Morricone did the music and it was absolutely amazing music. Hopefully some of the music I've played you in this video is Dean doing his homage to uh, Ennio Morricone because I don't know if Dean had, had heard of him or not and I sent him a I sent him a message I'll just put the camera down and talk to you yeah so I don't know if Dean had ever heard of Ennio Morricone I can't remember how it went now but I said to him have you heard of Ennio Morricone he's amazing if you could do some of that music for the videos it would be fantastic now Dean being the genius he is, I played him a few tracks or sent him a few tracks to listen to and he came up with possibly what you've been hearing in the video. I don't know if I'll use it or not now, but I, I, I plan to. Um, so that's Dean's little homage to Ennio Morricone. Now, I loved all the uh, stuff that he did for the uh, the films, The Good, The Bad, The, Un the Ugly, uh, for a few dollars more and all the rest of it. Amazing music. But my favourite and I don't know if it's if you've ever heard of it. It's called a gun for Ringo. Look it up on YouTube. Now there's two versions of it. There's one called the pistol for Ringo, which has got singing in. It's not as good. But you need to listen to a gun for Ringo. It's amazing. If I could use it in a video, I would do. But obviously I can't because the copyright. But a gun for Ringo and uh, the guitar. Anyway, you'll know what I mean if you listen to it. Don't listen to it now. Wait till after the video, wait till after the video. Well, a gun for Ringo and the, the strings that come in. Forget getting in your car and driving at 80 mile an hour and putting on some <laughs> music. Put that on with the strings and the guitar. Amazing stuff, a gun for Ringo uh, and Neil Morricone. I'll leave you with that. Oh, and before, uh, I, before I go on this subject, Blue Monday, new order. Um, a, a Morricone in one of the films, there was a, I can't remember what the, the, the piece was, but the, the bass went James is behind the camera, he's going, I think he knows what I'm on about. That inspired Blue Monday by New Order, so okay, Peter Oak, listen to that, and in Blue Monday, if you listen, yeah, the bass line goes that's inspired by Ennio Morricone. Anyway, that deserved to be in because a master, a great composer has died in the past week and I was thinking about him on the way here and uh, just thought I'd tell you how much I loved him and how much I loved Dean for being able to produce a piece of music similar to what Ennio Morricone could do. Anyway, let's crack on. Right, so, are you hungry? Yeah. <laughs> Monsters of uh, <laughs> of food. So what do you fancy? There was a chippy. Chippy. Chippy? Yeah. Or there's a pub. Pubs could be a bit dodgy because of the social distancing thing, couldn't they? Yeah. Um, that does sound good though. We'll go back into Edenfield. I'm sure there's a chippy on the corner. Uh, so come with us to the chippy or the pub. We'll let you know. Right, first time I've been in a pub for ages and ages and ages. Well, we're having something to eat, got a drink. I'm having a shandy, what are you having? Pine. We've got some food on the way. And then fish and chips, what are you having? Cheese onion pie. He went for the massive fat cheese onion pie. Cheese onion pie. Uh, you're buzzing on that. Buzzing. So there you go, we've had a great day. Yeah. Weather's not been perfect, but we've had a good day. That was a good meal, weren't it? Good meal, good pint. Is that cheese onion pie resting well with you? Bit of my belly, but it's alright. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks very very much for watching. Um, uh, we're getting off home now. 
and I shall see you very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. See you a bit.